This presentation is on perceptual maps. Perceptual maps are a useful tool to find the lie of the land in regards to perceptions of the marketplace. In marketing we say perception is reality. So as far as the customer is concerned, if that's the way they perceive your brand or your product, then for them that's true. And so it's fairly important to actually find out uh, where they perceive your product to sit against particular attributes uh, and also where they perceive the competitors' products to sit against um, very similar or the same attributes. So perceptual maps are usually based on market research. The first thing you need to do, and usually this is part of something like a focus group, you find out the critical success factors for that industry or find things that the customer sees as significantly important. And so we might use a, a fairly simple example of maybe laptop computers. You know, think of two things which laptop computers need to have. So we might just use two criteria. We could say that um, needs to be light and something that is uh, potentially easy to use. So these two criteria selected by the marketplace. So it's not about the organisation selecting them. It's about what the customers expect. And so they might something expect something that's very easy to use and something that's very light. Now I've scored these along an axis here 1 to 10. So something that is a scoring 10 is something that's very light. Um, something that's scoring 1 is very heavy. Something that's scoring 10 is very easy to use and something that's scoring 1 is very hard to use. So as part of your customer research, your market research, you actually ask the customers first off, you know, what are you looking for? And then you get to find out some levels of expectations. You know, are they looking for always something that's light or what are their minimum and maximum expectations on each of these attributes? So first off, we sort of ask them questions about, you know, how light something needs to be. Does it need to be light as a feather or something that's a lot more heavy? And we get some expectations. We get this range. So we might have a score of somewhere between 9 all the way down to, let's say, 6. And so I'm just going to drag a box over onto the screen. So we might have something which, at the maximum, it hits 9. And at the minimum, they're expecting something that's about a, a weight of about 6 out of 10, for example. Then we ask them, okay, so you've thought about this, this issue of things being light or heavy. Now, what's your expectation on ease of use? You know, do they all need to be really, really simple or can some things be a, bit, a little bit harder? Are there other things that you're prepared to trade off? And again, you ask them the same sort of questions, scoring their expectations between 10. What's their minimum expectation and what's their maximum expectation? So let's say their minimum expectation was a 7 out of 10 and their maximum expectation was 10 out of 10. So we're just going to move this box up. So the lower part of the box is on the 7, the upper part of the box is on the 10. So what this is suggesting is the customer is expecting anything that is in weight anywhere between 6 and 10 and ease of use between 7 and 10. And what you'll find through the research usually you'll find lots of different clusterings of expectations. So you might actually find there's another group of people who don't care whether something is uh, light or not. They're, ex they're okay if it's heavy, so long as perhaps it's very, very easy to use. And so they might have a very, very thin band of expectations. And so you can find this out by doing some research and finding out what the customer expects. This is part of segmentation. So you're actually starting to segment the market based on their needs. Instead of where they live or who they are, which is traditional sort of segmentation variables of geographic and demographic, you're starting to use uh, benefit or use segmentation, which is a far more advanced form of segmentation. Then, of course, further on in your research, you're saying, okay, we're now considering particular brands of products. Are they light and easy to use? And so from this, you get some expectations. You find out, well, brand A is something that's very easy to use, but it's not super light. You might find brand B sits way down here. Again, through more research, you might find things which are very, very light but not very easy to use. So you might find all of these different competitors' products sit all over the marketplace. And so from a fairly, fairly simple, fairly quick analysis, you can work out where each individual product sits in relation to others. And so, so this is, if this is us as brand B, we can see that brand A is probably our closest competitor. We can also see the things that we need to improve. We could say, well, if we make our product easier to use, we still sit within this frame of what people are looking for, and we get closer to their ideal, which 
to, I guess, anywhere that lands in here. If we're brand C, sure, we're super light, but the expectation is, well, maybe we're actually too light, you know, because people only want something that's 9 out of 10, but here we are sitting way over that. So, you know, we don't need to put so much effort on being light. We could perhaps, you know, make it a bit heavier or, or um, uh, lower the emphasis on our product being so light. But certainly one thing we would need to do is improve the ease of use. So as our product gets easier to use, maybe we just need to educate the customer on how to use it. So as they learn how to use it and it gets easier and easier to use, it sort of goes up into the right sort of area and lands in this green quadrant up here where it fits within customers' expectations. And it's certainly much easier to change our product. So, you know, for before we were sitting way over here, it's certainly easier to come up with some strategies to move ourselves over here than it is to change customers' expectations and move them over here. And again, you know, it's not really the right approach to, to convince the customer that they're actually wrong. Their perception was that they require something that fits in this box here. Now, just because we don't fit in that box, it's very difficult to try to change our perception that, that you know, we want different things. I mean, look at, for example, McDonald's. They're not going to try to change our perception that eating their types of hamburgers is actually the right thing to do. They're trying to say, look, you know, we're convenient. They're trying to find other things to make important rather than the thing they probably score really bad on, which is it being healthy. So... That's a fairly basic use of a perceptual map. Um, becomes a really useful tool because it's a good graphical representation of where you sit in the marketplace. Becomes really useful to explain to other people, you know, for example, managers, about um, where your product sits in relation to competitors and which competitors you really don't have to worry about. You know, if we're A or B, D is not in the same market as us, so we really shouldn't worry about them as a significant competitor. The same as C. If C is our competitor, again, they're really not a significant threat, the closest competitor to us is, um, is B. So hopefully that makes perceptual maps a little bit easier for you to understand. Um, I'll continue with other, other videos as we go through this topic.